Okay, now doing the frame working. Um, as I said, I'm doing it with this um, 70 mil by 20 mil pine. Um, I'm framing it all the way around it. Now, I'll cut these four lengths, which are going to be the uplights. I'm going to start with the uplights, then I'll do the intermediaries. Um, so I'll cut these four uplights. Now, obviously, this needs to fit the room snugly, so each piece needs to be marked where it is, how it's going. Uh, all individual. Now, this one is going against the wall, which I have already scribed and cut with my... Thank you, very kind of you to say so. But no, seriously, with my perfect butt, which is the scribing kit. Um, allowing me to get an exact point of curvature of that wall, which is quite a bit. We've gone from about 6mm there up to a good 15mm at the top and bottom. So quite a bit of deviation in that plaster. Now I'm going to be bungalowsing two of them because they are protruding and I want to get a nice rounded feel on it. And also I'm going to be doing the same on the two inner shelves as I did on the toy tray shelves, which is this one. Um, which again has a bung nose on one end. So I shall cut another piece. Um, it'll be cut in half. So I'll do bung nose both sides of it. Um, and run them bung noses through now. Then I can change over to a quarter round and do the other adjacent sides, which I want doing. Um, and I think that's probably the end of the bung nosing. So I can leave the um, quarter round in, ready to do all the other pieces of the horizontals when I get to doing that bit. I'll be lifting the arse, so I'll do both sides of this on one wood. Okay, change over this bit. got the uplights going in first then I'll be having cost members coming to them I've got all this rounded openness and I'm wanting to join to it but what I want to do is keep that emphasized and to do that what I'm going to do is take this as one of the cost members and bullnosing or rather and quarter round over it the end. So when they put together, you get that joint with a quarter round over. And I'll just sneak a disc behind it so that it goes in tight. And that'll just give me that nice shapey feel to things. Put something interesting into it. So I'm going to be doing that with all the jointing parts that goes into it. All right, now I just need to rip that piece down and I can run that through there as well. Right, so again, I'll just run these through so that I've got around on top. So I'll leave that one there. <laughs> so 
So the next thing I want to, I need to work out with this lot is biscuits, because it's going to be biscuits jointed to the carcass itself. Now, on the first one, I've already done it. Basically, I've marked lines on this while it's against the cabinet, so I can mark the lines on the cabinet as well. So I know my centres for the biscuits. And I mark the edge of the ply, because the ply is not very perfect against the wall. I need to know what the edge of the ply is, then I can subdivide that to get the centre of the biscuit. Now I need to do that with all of them, get the biscuits installed in the cartridges, and then take these up and put them into place before I can measure the cross members. Because obviously they're going to move over. So I need to do that now, so the biscuits are the next priority for me. I've already installed the biscuits into the uh, body, the carcass of it all. Um, and now I'm wanting to mount it on the trims. These are for the front of the shelves that are inside the cupboard by the window. Um, I've marked top and bottom, T and B, so I know which is which. That is the top of it, the bottom is the bottom. This is for the bottom shelf and I've marked where I want the biscuits to be. I where they are already on the With the biscuit jointer, I have set the gauge so that it sits perfectly level, uh, perfectly centre on the plywood, dead centre to the plywood. And um, with these, as that's sitting on the top of the plywood, I can and get the centre and get the exact same setting so they will meet together perfectly. That's standard, simple, easy. However, for the rest of it. That line represents the edge of the plywood. That's less than halfway into the piece of wood, which means that line has got to represent that saw plate. But it can, it's in the way. So we'll come on to that in a bit, and how we will deal with that. First off, let's get the basic ones done and out of the way. Right, now then, the challenge. What we've got to do, remove this, and push this down, so that it's sitting on the line. That saw plate there, that is giving me the centre. Okay, I've got a test piece, I'm going to use and mark where that is, exactly the square to the wall. That there, copy it, See if I can get it right. Yeah, and I'll take it over to this. Line it up, line it up, line it up. <laughs> now, that fits, then I can do more. Okay, a few modifications there. Start off with the wood was different thickness, was the first one. Um, so I was totally wrong on it. The next was, I was doing the wrong side of the line. It's not that side of the line at all, it's that side of the line. Um, if I hadn't have realised that, I would have got them all wrong. But once I've got it on the right side of the line, and the right thickness of wood, it works perfect. Right, so I want the top of that on that line, that way around. Like that. Right, so that <laughs> that was the hard one done, so that's good. The next one, this is, which is this one, number one, the bedside. Right, um, all I want in here is, it's a bull nose there, um, am I, am I, am I, no, wrong. 
that is butted up to the bed. That's going to be butted up to the bed. So that is that. Now that wants to be an exact even all the way around. So I think I can get away with using this again. Shall we get this in the lights? Really, it's just so I can set the first one. Because I kind of set it like dancing in our other place. Okay, now I marked that side of the plywood, not that side. So if that, that line must be on the outer side of the plywood, so that should be correct. So now I should be able to do all of them on that. Right, let me take that over and just check it. Okay, the next one is the other one with the bungalows. Now on this one, all I need to cons all I want to do, the objective is to have that bungalow sitting outside of the pie. So I'm just going to set this. Here we go. Set this so that that crease line that I get making the bungalows is sitting perfect with my whip pen. And as long as they're all the same, the mark giving uniformity to it. That's all. Let's go try that one. Okay, right, on this one, all I want is to be in the middle. So the biscuit wants to be in the middle, so this jig wants to be set back so that it puts me in the middle. Okay. Okay, that's the last one. If this all works fine, then it's. Uh, I can get on with making the horizontals. Awesome. Get this off. Get this off and get it tested. Okay, so I'm only concerned with getting it the right way up. Everything else should be simple and straightforward. See, it's giving it that structure now, and it's hiding all them old blades. Now, what I need to do is do the cross members. So, I need one, two, three, four, five, six. The top one, seven, eight. Here, nine, ten, eleven. The top one, twelve. So, I need twelve cross members. That one's got a joint on it. And then I need another upright because I want to put one here. You see, that one's sitting forward. I want another one sitting on here, level. On with that. So really looking at it, I think I'm probably better off doing that first before I do them ones, because that's got to sit there and that will butt up to them. Um, so I'll have to do. Uh, but mainly getting the measurements between them is something I can now do. Oh, back to the workshop and start making that lot. But it's coming along. <laughs> 